This is Dr. Holt, and in this video I want to go over an approach that I use in finding the center of mass or of objects. Here I have an object, it's fully dimensioned, and I want to find out where the center of mass is of this object. So what I do is I take the object or the area here and I break it into separate areas. I broke it into three areas. My area is area number one, area number two, and area number three. I put dots here to represent where the center of mass will be. Now, other thing I did is I, I create another dot over here, and I'm going to put it where I'm going to take all my dimensions from. Now, I'm going to take it from this location here. You could take it from here, here. You can move all over. You can take it anywhere you want. Just be consistent. But I'm going to take all my measurements from, basically, I'm going to do it, actually do it here. I'm going to take it from all from this location right here. Basically, that's, I'm going to let this be my horizontal axis, and this is my y-axis here. <clears throat> so then what I do is I create a table. And the first column, I'm going to list every shape that I have. And then the second column, I'm going to have all my area. And the third column is going to be my x-bar. That's going to be the distance in the horizontal uh, direction from this blue dot. The y-bar is going to be the vertical distance from this blue dot to the center of mass. And then I'm going to multiply this value here times the area, put it in this uh, cell right here. Same way with area times y bar, I'll take this times this area here. So I'll step you through each one of these. The first part, number one. Now number one is, is 30 inches long and it's going to be 10 inches tall, 15 minus 5. So 30 times 10 gives me the 300. Now let me get rid of this. Uh, I don't want to see that again. Okay. So I want to find out now where my horizontal. So it's going to be half of 30, which is going to be 15. I take 300 times 15. I put 4,500 here. The distance in the y direction, I'm going to go up 5. Now this one is 15 minus 5, so it's going to be 10. So I'm going to go up another 5. So I'm going to go up 10. So I go up 5 and then another 5, and that's going to be the location, the y direction. And I put that right there, then I multiply the 2, the 300 times the 10 to give me the 3,000. I go to object number 2. Object number 2 is going to be 30 minus 17, that's going to be 13 uh, long, and it has a thickness of 5. So 13 times 5 gives me the area of 65. Now I'm going to find the horizontal distance, so I'm going to take um, 13, I'm going to divide it by 2, that's going to give me 6.5, I'll add that to 17, so that means it's 23.5 over from here, I put that in that location here. Number 2 is 5 tall, I take 5 divided by 2, it gives me 2.5, so my y bar is 2.5. Again, area times this, that gives me 1527.5, area times y bar gives me 162.5. I jump to number 3, and I won't go through all the steps, but basically I do the same thing. I try to find out what is the horizontal distance from here all the way over to line up with this uh, area 3, and I call that the number 3 x bar. I do the same thing with the y bar. I find out what is the vertical distance from here up to that red dot in the y direction. I put that in to this these two columns here. I do the multiplication. 25 times 27.5 gives me the 687.5. And 25 times 17.5 gives me the 437.5. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to sum up this column here. And I do that, I get 390. I'm going to sum up this column here. I get 6,715. I sum up this column here. I get 3,600. So now to find the overall X bar of this object, I take the this value right here, 6715. I divide it by the area. That gives me 17.22. I do the same thing here. I take 3,600 divided by 390. I get 9.23. So that means if I come over 17.22 from here, I will be lined up exactly where the horizontal distance is from this point over to the center mass of this entire object here. And I'll just draw myself another point to show you where that would be roughly. Again, this object's not drawn to scale, but it's, it's close enough to give you a good uh, idea. And I'll make that orange right now. Okay. So the center of mass is sitting somewhere, uh, let's see, somewhere probably right in there, about there. 
So we would go over again 17.22 from here over to find this value here. And I would go up 9.23 from here up. And that would give me the location here. And this would be the center mass of all three areas combined. Now, if you have objects such as holes or anything is taking area away, the only difference you're going to do is in the area here, you make the area where you're taking away, you do that negative. Then when you do the product or the multiplication between each one of these, you'll get a negative value here. So when you sum up, you'll be subtracting those areas. All right, so this is the approach that I like to use. It's very difficult to make a mistake as long as you include every one of the shapes. And again, don't be too picky about the shapes. You can use any type of configurations you want. For example, I could have made number one only be this area from here and then made number two come all the way up and included this. It makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, I hope you find this short video useful, but I think this is a good approach as far as finding the center mass of an area.